Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hello, guys. Look, I'm trying to work on my green screen skills, but you see how it, it's fuzzy? Like, right at the edges of you? Mainly at, like, something that's not as clear-cut, like, hair. Um, and so you see the background, it kind of continues, like... But, uh, yeah, I'm, st I'm still trying to get, I've never really tried to, like, sit down and master, okay, lighting and, you know, audio or, and, and I need a new computer, I gotta buy an upgrade, and I, I just, I need to kind of get some new stuff and, uh, pursue my, anyways, my name's Connor, if you're new, I like to, uh, learn about things and watch stuff on YouTube. History Matters, great channel. I liked it. Pre preemptive like. Um, yeah, awesome channel. Let's do it. If you are not ready to learn, there's the door. Home I can sit down the hall. Make me a grilled cheese. Or sit in the back and chill. Um, yeah, th this channel is, you know, short videos. There's always people saying, oh, yeah, I don't like they're really short. I love them that these videos are great. I always say this at getting your foot in the door. That can be intimidating when you don't know nothing about a subject to get a to get a really quick and let's be honest including myself people don't have very large attention spans but it can help you when you watch something kind of entertaining and overview to then be like oh that's interesting and then deep uh dive deeper into it that's my opinion anyways let's go hope you're all doing well i did all the things original link discord and Let's go. When France fell Bones to away. Germany in May 1940, Brit when France fell to Germany mm. in May 1940, Britain was left standing alone. Well, sort of alone. Alone in the sense of it was only Britain and all of its empire remaining in the fight. Irrespective, the United Kingdom's position at that point wasn't exactly enviable and there were many politicians there who thought the fighting on was foolish. So, given Britain's outlook at this point, this raises the question. Why didn't Britain make peace after the fall of France? So D uh, Maybe because they had a very, you know, superior, like an, a very amazing navy, and you had to cross the English Channel. It's like with the Napoleonic Wars, like uh, on land, in on Europe, Napoleon is going to crush any individual army. It would crush the British army if it was just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, uh so just like the Germans, it's like, yeah, they can crush anyone on the continent pretty much easily, except the Russians. Um, but, you know, they're not going to give up the British until it's clear that they can't defend it anymore. You know, OK, I won't talk as much. Sorry. As you will know, 1940 saw the German invasion of Denmark, Norway, the Benelux region and France, and to put it mildly, things didn't go well for the Allies. After the fall of Norway, Britain's Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain was under a lot of pressure to resign and there were two candidates to succeed Quit him. Nerd. Lord Halifax, who said no, thus narrowing it down to only one candidate, Winston Churchill. During this time, the British government was divided as to whether or not it should continue the war. So far, things hadn't exactly gone well and the odds only seemed to be getting worse and worse. This was mostly because France was faring poorly at this point, which threw the British strategy of letting the French get punched in the face until Britain could arm and train up an army of about one and a half million men and send them to the continent, which was planned for about 1942. With France about to fall, Lord Halifax pushed to make peace and negotiate via Mussolini's government. This wasn't because Halifax thought that Britain was going to be conquered or mostly put in charge or something, but because he didn't think that... Mm -hmm. uh, with France... ...and a half million men and send them to the continent which was planned for about 1942. With France about to fall, Lord Halifax pushed to make peace and negotiate via Mussolini's government. This wasn't because Halifax thought that Britain was going to be conquered or mostly put in charge or something, but because he didn't think that any victory was worth a World War I-style war of attrition. As you'll know, Halifax's proposals went nowhere. But why... Well, then you're just going to set a trend of... that. That's awful, uh, because then you're, you're, you're setting a... You're giving notice that anything that the only thing that your opponent has to do is threaten full out i'm willing to go trench warfare stalemate and you're just gonna say oh not worth it you know the world war one style war of attrition 
As you'll know, Halifax's proposals went nowhere, but why was that the case? There were several reasons. The first was that Churchill and many in government didn't trust any treaty that Hitler was willing to sign. Furthermore, one of Germany's conditions for peace was the return of its former African and Asian colonies, which was not something that the Allies were willing to countenance. The second reason was that British military leadership was confident that they could, at worst, push Germany to a stalemate, and at best last until the German economy collapsed just like in World War I. So for them, it was simply a case of keeping public morale up and not bankrupting the country by keeping the sea lanes open. This opinion was solidified when Italy joined the war and Britain decided to focus on Italy, the idea being that just like the soft underbelly, quote, Austria-Hungary in the last World War, Germany would constantly have to bail them out. The third reason was that Britain was confident that Germany would eventually do something silly like invade the Soviet Union or do something that would pull the United States into the war. Germany had noobs on its team on both wars. Or they do oh, something US. silly like invade the Soviet Union. I was U surprised learning just, I knew that we were hesitant to get into the war, but just how unwilling and we d to get involved in Europe at all, even if like the UK fell or, or whatever like that, it, it amazed me at, at just how much like staunchly we were against it. Uh, getting involved. Union or do some reason was that Britain was confident that Germany would eventually do something silly like invade the Soviet Union or do something that would pull the United States into the war. This wasn't due to some hunch, but because Britain and Polish codebreakers had heard it from the Germans themselves. And to help secure support from the US, Britain was sure to fight the war on as many fronts as from the Germans themselves. And to help. There I am, guys. Right there I am. You see this like hook right here? Cape Cod? Boom. To help secure support from the US, Britain was sure to fight the war on as many fronts as possible. For example, by quickly sending troops to Greece when it was invaded. This wasn't because they thought they could stop its fall, but because it made it clear that they were the ones defending smaller nations' independence or on the side of international stability, which would indirectly put pressure on American politicians to eventually do something. Britain's leadership didn't believe that it could conventionally defeat Germany. But Wait, huh? I'm so sorry. I really am, but I'm going back. Codebreakers had heard it from the Germans themselves. And to help secure support from the US, Britain was sure to fight the war on as many fronts as possible. For example, by quickly sending troops to Greece when it was invaded. This wasn't because they thought they could stop its fall, but because it made it clear that they were the ones defending smaller nations' independence or were on the side of international stability. Interesting. Which I'm would glad indirectly put pressure on American politicians to eventually do I'm something. Glad I went back. Britain's leadership didn't believe that it could conventionally defeat Germany, but that it simply had to hold out until about 1942 until Germany made a mistake which it did in 1941, and soon afterwards its ally Japan did the same, bringing two monumental allies into the conflict and tipping the scales. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you for watching. With the thank special you for making. That was an awesome History Matters uh, episode. Um, Thanks to my pay. Yeah, really cool. Uh, if you guys could answer any of my questions, if I had them. Um, yeah, awesome video, as always. Awesome blossom. Extra awesome. Hope you guys are all doing well. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye.